This is the FlipNerd.com Expert Real Estate Investing Show, the show for real estate investors, whether you're a veteran or brand new. I'm your host, Mike Hambright, and each week I bring you a new expert guest that will share their knowledge and lessons with you. If you're excited about real estate investing, believe in personal responsibility, and taking control of your life and financial destiny, you're in the right place. This is episode number 336, and my guest today is Matt Garabedian. Matt is a Fresno, California-based real estate investor that is crushing it right now in his market. Matt played uh, baseball in college for one of the top college programs in the country and uses analogies between baseball and real estate investing that create powerful lessons for real estate investors. I was excited to have this discussion today as I use baseball analogies often for real estate investing as well, although I never played professional sports or even in college. So um, uh, it's going to be a great show. And if you're looking to take your business to the next level or even get started as a real estate investor, you're really going to love today's show. So check it out. Please help me welcome Matt to the show. Hey, Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate being here. Yeah, yeah. Good, good to have you. So uh, I'm excited to talk about this topic today of basically making the analogy of, of sports, and I know your, your background is baseball, uh, to real estate investing, because there's, there's a ton of analogies that can be made. Uh, and I think a lot of real estate investors are just kind of flying by the seat of their pants. So when you kind of give it that framework, I think it helps make a lot more sense. Yeah, I agree. I, I couldn't agree more, actually. Uh, I'm a big believer in the, the mindset. And like you said, I, I had some experience in, in baseball. I played my whole life and went to Long Beach State. And I had never heard about psychology or mindset with really anything, uh, especially with baseball. Yeah. Some of the principles I've learned in just the sport has helped me t- transition out of the sport and into into business and to just as in life. It's It's been really a, a huge factor for me. Yeah, I've, I've, know, I've actually known a few people that – um, either played professional sports uh, or even through the college level that really have a great business mind because they've applied that framework to it. And I don't think everybody does. Uh, and I don't, But I think when, if you watch sports, if you grew up playing sports, then you start to see these connections. And you're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense, right? <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely. You know, it, the, the, like these guys that you see on TV, you know, performing at these high levels, you'd have to imagine – amount of challenges and obstacles that they'd had to overcome to get to where they're at making millions of dollars and playing at a, at a major league level. Yep. I mean, I heard some crazy, you know, uh, something to the extent of you have better uh, odds of being struck by lightning than playing in major league baseball. Yeah. So that's, that puts it into context. Yeah, I know we're going to talk about this, but, you know, uh, and I want to steal your thunder, but one of the obvious things is overcoming a lot of failure because you, you you can't be a professional athlete in any sport and not have lost a lot, but you just keep coming back to play again, right, which is a lot of real estate investors get defeated. So I know we're going to talk about that a little bit. I don't want to steal your thunder on that. But, hey, before we kind of dive into this too far, t- tell us your background and, and where you, I know you're out of Fresno, California and uh, doing really well. It sounds like you're killing it, but tell us about your background and, and how you got to where you are today. Sure. Yes. Born and raised in Fresno, California. And uh, I became a real estate broker in 2009. And the the brokerage that I have is called Royal Realty Property Management and Investments. And I got that name from my grandfather who started Royal Realty in the, in the 60s. And um, so traditionally, you know, I got into the real estate side brokering buyers and sellers and i i quickly learned that you know that really wasn't something that was my niche uh yeah. i got into uh, apartments uh, in terms of representing buyers for large apartment complexes and i i learned about net operating income and cap rates and i, I really enjoyed that aspect dealing with guys that are numbers driven as opposed to you know, yes, we don't like the, or we do, or we don't like the paint color of this house. So, right. you know, I, I, that wasn't really my, my, my focal point. And so in selling these apartment complexes, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, well, it's great to make a commission, but how do I get on the other side of the table? Right. You know, and I, I, I wasn't, unfortunately, I wasn't uh, given a, a head start or a, you know, a couple million dollar loan like Donald Trump. So I had to figure out 
you know, well, if I want to get to the other side of the table, you know, and the the the, the prices of properties here in the in the valley, you know, aren't millions of dollars. So how do I get in place and, and, and get an opportunity to buy property and, and become an investor? Yep. And so, of course, you know, in in researching and trying to find what my opportunities would be, you know, I came across wholesaling uh, that, and that was in 2010 uh, through uh, the Fortune Builders. I think you guys have probably heard their names before. Yep. yep. Yeah, I think everybody's heard yep. of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I also uh, would watch stuff online like a like a Preston Ely was something so a guy that I I just got a kick out of because he had a, a cool personality and yeah. and made it like so fun and exciting that I'm like wow like this is this is awesome yep yep awesome awesome that's great and so tell us a little bit about like what your what your you don't have to give any specific numbers I know you told me ahead of time that you had a, just a banner year in 2016 but talk about you know kind of your exit strategies and your your vol just some idea of your volume. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the, we just finished 2016 obviously, but you know, just to put it in perspective, uh, you know, I do a mixture of wholesale and rehab, uh, primarily I'm a wholesale guy at heart, uh, cause I've been at both ends of the, of the disposition, if you will. Yeah. And I, I like wholesale. I just think it's, it's a, just a great opportunity to, uh, get a real, opportunity to, to learn the business. And I yeah. tell everybody getting into business, do not rehab wholesale first, learn the business. Then rehab is kind of like what you graduate to. But yeah, I mean, you know, uh, my, my goal for, for 2017 is, you know, um, you know, I'd like to do $2 million in 2017. So that, that's, that's my from a goal. profit perspective. Yeah. From a profit that's perspective. Great. Well, it sounds like you're well on your way from what you told me from 2016. So that's awesome. Well, let's talk about let's talk about again how 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 you can compare, you know, sports. So let's just continue to use baseball as an analogy to real estate investing, and let's kind of break this down for people that are listening right now, uh, and just talk about some of the similarities, and then and then we'll kind of start to dive in a little bit deeper. Sure. So I think uh, one of the greatest things you could think about is, you know, let's just talk about baseball. So if you're failing seven out of 10 times at the plate, you strike out, you ground out, whatever, fail seven times, you're a 300 hitter. And more than likely you're making millions of dollars and, and you're at the top of the game. Right, yeah. And, 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 and I never knew anything in life that you could fail seven out of 10 times and, and someone would call you a winner. You know, and so it, it was really unique when you after put it you're like ten years until until you're like ten years old though. When you're before that, it's like hey, everybody everybody wins. Exactly. <laughs> but then the I real never, life, no real world sets in. Trophies. No participation trophies in in the yeah. in the business world. So that helped me in terms of understanding that it's okay to fail. It's okay to go through tough situations because if you have the right mindset you're going to learn from each of those at bats. And then you're next time you step up to the plate, you're going to be better prepared to handle what's coming at you. So in business and specifically in our business in real estate, you know, I, I just through not understanding my, my KPIs and understanding my business, I'm going to fail. If I talk to a hundred people, I'm going to fail 98 times. I'm going to get a deal after about 50 conversations is how my numbers break out. Mm. So if I didn't have that mindset, I mean, I don't know when those yeses are going to come. So it could come at number nine, number 98 or number 99 or number 99 and number 100. So I've gone through 98 rejections before I find those two yeses. Yeah. If you don't understand that, right, you know, it could be a tough road. Yeah. One of the things that's interesting is uh... – so certainly by the time you get to, to college sports, even high school sports, um, they're keeping stats, right? Like you have stats to look at. You have a scorecard to look at and see how, especially in baseball, right? You know your batting average. You know a bunch of kind of basic stats. And when I coach people, you know, even in my own business, we have a very detailed kind of management dashboard. Like we know exactly what our numbers should be for certain criteria, like how many leads are we converting into appointments, how many – offer how many leads are we converting into offers and buys and you know some basic statistics but i think a lot of real estate investors don't have that they're just going on deals and they're not really kind of looking to see how am i trending or how can i improve and i mean maybe share your thoughts on how if you don't have those things you know it's obviously very difficult to improve upon right 
It's time for a quick announcement. We'll be back to the show in less than 30 seconds. PassiveRental.com is your source for turnkey, done-for-you rental properties. If you'd like to be an investor and not a landlord, please visit PassiveRental.com to learn how to purchase cash-flowing, professionally managed rental properties in the hottest rental markets across the country. We can also help connect you with financing for your next property. Invest the easy way today and get started by visiting PassiveRental.com. I mean, maybe share your thoughts on how, if you don't have those things, you know, it's obviously very difficult to improve upon, right? I I couldn't agree with you more. And I think that's part of the evolution of being a a guy that is just learning about wholesaling and maybe doing a deal or two and then having some success and then making it a business after that. So once you're able to get and and make a business, then it's almost critical that you understand your your KPIs. So, yeah. you know, I've got uh, a set that I focus on and you've mentioned them, you know, how many pieces of direct mail are we sending out? Yep. What's the response rate? How many appointments do I get and how many closings? So, you know, we're we're sending a a, a huge amount of direct mail out every month and, and it's 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 expensive to do that. So, if you're not tracking and and split testing and knowing where you're spending your marketing dollars, um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't help get you that clarity in right. your business. Yep, yep, and that's huge. Do you want to maybe just take a? I know we could we could have hours of conversation on this, but just at a high level for folks that are listening that are like, well, how do I even get started in tracking my stats? I mean, you know, you could say, hey, I'm going to send out a postcard and. One of them is going to have black ink and one of them is going to have red ink. And I'm going to test that with a different phone number, which actually the technology is easier than ever to do that. Right. Now. I don't know what your systems are, but it's pretty easy. But um, even at a high level, just like how much I spend on marketing and what my return is, maybe just kind of share some basic stats people can use to uh, kind of implement into their business. Uh, are you asking me how I do it or, or what, you know, what, what or the- if, yours is, if yours is a little bit complicated, like you kind of evolved into that? Like if folks are listening right now and, and they're not doing any tracking at all, where, where would you suggest that they at least get started? Yeah. Well, you, I think you would definitely have to have some type of CRM, yeah. you know, you yeah. know, if people are calling you and it's going to your cell phone, uh, that's probably not going to be the, the ideal situation. You're not right? have the best conversion. No. I mean, when I started out, I was using a, a yellow pad and a you know, an internet yep. connection, I guess. I mean, that's how everyone kind of starts out. But then right. once you start investing marketing dollars, you know, and your response rate increases based on the type of material or marketing material you use, you know, you've got to be able to have tracking in your business because it's never a, a one call and close, right? right. You've, you've got to be able to pr- nurture that lead, go through the, the system of from you know introduction to gauging their motivation, what their response is to a uh, you know a, a, an appointment to close, etc. So you know from for my company we use Podio, um, yeah. which I believe a lot of people use. Uh, it's a custom Podio, so you know we've invested you know quite a bit of money to make it fit for us and where it's uh, it's a good working system that we have right now. Yep. Um, awesome. I'll I'll use uh, CallRail. Um, to, yeah, we do too. <laughs> yeah, so that that's that 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 in itself is just awesome. It sounds like your marketing's working, man. Your phones. Uh, are yeah, our phones are blowing <laughs> up over here. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, you're fine. <laughs> uh, I I <laughs> I uh, I use CallRail because it, it it helps identify the the, the specific piece we're using. Absolutely. Um, but, I mean that, and then sometimes I'll use it just to go directly to voicemail. Uh, but I have phone numbers where we have a live answering service. And so they'll uh, they'll input the lead for us uh, through Podio. So we have different systems in place. But I could pull up a report and say, okay, you know, on December first, I sent out five thousand pink postcards to a high equity absentee, and I sent five thousand postcards to a a notice of default, and they were green. I mean, just as an example. Right. And so. Um, I'll be able through CallRail to to split test that and see okay what's working and what's not. Absolutely, and and the, and, and the numbers are like you know depends on your account, but they're like three bucks a month, so it's right. real easy to kind of set up different phone numbers and treat them all the same way, but at least be able to track things like you know do some split testing or track a letter versus a postcard or uh, anything else, right? 
Exactly. It, yeah. It's awesome in that sense because, Mike, our phones are just going crazy right now. Your, so your, your direct mail just your letters just hit, man. It's it's it, it is the it is hitting. It, they went out on the on the seventh, so you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see if I could just. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep I'll keep talking here while you're while you're messing with yeah. that. So Thanks. yeah, I think the, the the important thing is like at a high level, you know, for those of you listening that are like already kind of maybe getting overwhelmed here is track how much you spent on a certain type of media. So whether it's direct mail and even if it's direct mail, you might separate postcards versus letters or a lead source like probates versus, you know, some sort of high equity absentee owner or something like that. Right. It's just to kind of split it down and say, how much did I spend on, on that campaign almost. Right. Yes. And then how many leads did I get from it? How many we track, we track things like, you know, how many leads, how many appointments did we set? We actually track how many appointments we attended because sometimes, you know, there's cancellations and stuff like that. Um, did we make an offer? Did we get a contract? And then ultimately, did we close on it? So really kind of five or six kind of sets of criteria. And it's fairly easy to, I mean, we honestly, for years and years, we did that in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, yeah. So I, I would think there's much better ways today. We, we use Podio as well. But um, but um, uh, I think just those basic stats are kind of your your scoreboard. So. Yeah. And, and they're huge. I mean, and that allows you to re reverse engineer things. You can, you can yeah. pinpoint exactly, okay, you know, uh, in February, we sent out X amount and got this response. And in March, we did this. So if you, if you have a, a six month set of data, you know, data doesn't lie, right? So numbers right. are numbers speak for themselves. So if you could see some type of correlation or trend in the numbers, then you can make those, and we, we talked about this, the small tweaks and adjustments make huge results. Yeah. No, you don't need to reinvent the wheel here. It's, 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 do I know my data? Can I look at a sample size of data and say, okay, this is working and I can see why it's trending or this isn't working and, and here's why. So Absolutely, let's cut yeah. this out and focus on what's working. So if you don't have those numbers, then essentially you're just, you're, you're throwing it to, to chance. Yeah. For most of us in this business, our biggest expense is advertising, right? So you need to kind of monitor the performance of your advertising. I mean, one thing just at a high level, so we can move on here is you might, you might find that, uh, you get the same number of leads, let's say, for your direct mail and your uh, pay-per-click advertising, okay? But if unless you're looking at this data, if you're just kind of merging everything together and saying, hey, I got 50 leads from this and 50 leads from that, and then from there you kind of merge everything together, like you might not realize that you close your pay-per-click leads at double the rate that you do your direct mail leads, right? So if you're tracking those things up front, then you might say, hey, I'm going to do less direct mail and more pay-per-click because... I'm closing at twice the rate for one reason or another, but that allows you to make decisions on your advertising, right? A hundred percent. I mean, I think that is, it speaks for itself. So yeah. you definitely need to know where your marketing dollars are going and where your best return is. And if you can identify that, then that's a huge, huge win. Yeah. So let's talk about kind of understanding why you're doing this as a real estate investor. I, I, with, without using like a cliche of, you know, a lot of people say, well, you need to understand your, what your why is and why you're doing that. It's an important thing, right? But <laughs> let's, make, let's make the analogy there with, uh, with people that are in college they, that are playing baseball like you did. I don't know if you had kind of major league aspirations or whatever, but just talk about what the uh, – probably a lot of people do, right? And then if, you get to the, then if you get to the major leagues, then, of course, your aspirations are to make it to a certain team or to make more money or, or win the girls or whatever it might be, right? Oh, but uh, just talk about yeah. how important that is and let's kind of relate it back to – to uh, sports. Well, to be honest, you know, I, I never had dreams of becoming a major league baseball player. Like okay. for me, just being able to go to college and play baseball there was like it for me, you know? Yeah. And I, and, and I was actually a, a, a somewhat recruited walk on. So when I went to school, they were number two in the country and it was a gamble for me to even go cause I didn't have a scholarship. And so I walked on essentially and uh, made the team and, um, you know, th that was such a, a big win for me, yep. uh, only because it gave me the opportunity to do something that I love, which is play baseball, compete at a high level, and then get, you know, a tremendous amount of life skills. And I can't stress that enough. Like, I feel so blessed to be able to be in that position because it taught me so much. It taught me to get up, you know at five o'clock in the morning and, and hit the weights and, and then, you know, get, get my schoolwork done and get out to practice. Right. And then we did that every single day. So it was so regimented, you know, it, it, the, the power of, you know, consistency and focusing on, 
let's focus on our our uh, our actions and not the results. So I know I kind of diverged there from your question, but the you know the why, right? It's 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 huge because everyone has to understand why they're why they're venturing out to you know we're entrepreneurial people. Yep. This is an entrepreneurial business. We're not guaranteed a paycheck. So if someone says, well, I want to be rich, well, that's great, but that's not going to get you out of bed every day, you know, when you're six months into it and you're still waiting to get your first deal. <laughs> right? And so those things kind of quickly dissolve into re and reality hits. And I, I don't know. I mean, uh, you've talked to, I think you said I'm number 330 something on the internet. So you've interviewed sure, 336. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, you've interviewed a lot of successful guys and you've been successful yourself. And the guys that I've been around, I'm in a high level mastermind group and, uh, and, and I network with a lot of very successful entrepreneurial business owners in real estate. And a lot of those guys came from long odds, you know, and, you know, facing bankruptcy or, or you know, having a foreclosure, getting, you know, told no a million times, uh, failure, 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 failure. So what was it about them? What, what kind of cloth were they cut from to overcome those? Right. That's, That's the awesome. big question. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, you're going to fail. You know, I fail every day. We all fail. You know, I said, I fail 98 out of a hundred times. So you got to dig down and ask yourself, Am I prepared and willing to go through this to get to the quote unquote end of the rainbow where the gold is, I guess? Yeah. You've got to have a why. And for me, you know, it was, I want to provide that quality of life and opportunity, not only, you know, for my family and for my children. And, and, and for me, it, that challenge of leaving Fresno and going to Long Beach State and walking on when no one even knew who I was that challenge to me got me up every day to compete. And that's the, that's what I take from that analogy from the sports world to business. I compete every day with myself and with the, with the industry and, and finding those, those, those gold nuggets, I guess. Right. Right. And then, and then like, even like sports, you have to work hard to stay on top, right. Or even get ahead. Like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I think like you said, some people will say, well, I want to be rich. It's like, well, just why don't you just, become self-sufficient first and, and, then <laughs> to, and, then, and then you set another goal, right? Like I'm going to improve, yeah. improve my swing or whatever it might be uh, kind of incrementally. So I think a lot of, that's why a lot of people fail. I think in real estate is um, first off, they, they don't have any idea what they're doing or they don't think you need to spend money on advertising. It's like, well, don't, don't you just, they think the easy part is just finding deals. Like that's just kind of a given. It's like, no, that's the hardest part. Right. But uh, the other thing is, is they don't really realize that you have to make incremental improvements. They just assume like, well, I, I'm either going to make it right away or I'm not. And it's like, no, that's not really how it works. And I, and I, I think you could probably agree to this too, Mike. It's, you know, you've got to invest in yourself. I invested, yeah. I, you know, thousands of hours at one, two, three o'clock in the morning, just gobbling up content that I could find watching guys that were doing big things and, and trying to emulate their success. And, Absolutely. and, the, the, the knowledge that's out there, picking up books and reading, I mean, it's huge. Um, so, so when you start spending time, money, and effort into yourself and knowledgeing up and leveling up, then, then it starts to become where you can start to trend and become successful because you're gaining that knowledge, you know, something just very elementary as how to put a wholesale deal together to understanding uh, marketing concepts to understanding, you know, the, the rigors and the, the terminology of just real estate period. Right. So th there's a lot of moving parts to our business, but yeah. just to break it down, you know, uh, I go, I, I look at it now. It's like, how can I win the day? And, and for me, if, if I could, if I could get up and, and get a workout in and, and, and start eating right, at the beginning of the day, that's a win for me. That, that's something that I'm trying to really implement early here in, the, in 2017. Because if I'm off on that part of my life, then I'm not happy, you know? And so can I win the day 
early can, and, and, and get my exercise in and, and get a decent breakfast and then start focusing on, okay, how can I win the day on my business? Yeah, that's great. You know, yeah, this is a, uh, uh, to, to use another, uh, analogy to baseball. It's really a game of base hits, right? You just, yeah, you just, uh, take small steps. People just, people are excited about home runs and everybody loves a home run or a grand slam, but it's really base hits that win, win a lot more games, right? I'll take singles and doubles all day. Yeah. And so, you know, yes, everyone loves the home run. Absolutely. Yeah. Those don't come along as often, but if you're, again, if you're focused on, uh, consistency, consistency breeds success, you know, don't get, they like say, don't get shiny object syndrome. I'm not trying to be all things to all people. Uh, the moment that you have purpose and clarity in your business, you'll be able to start hitting consistent singles, then consistent doubles, and then your home runs will be mixed in. Yeah. Yeah. And really, I've always kind of told people in this business, it's a, it's a, I, I literally have used this analogy. I didn't, I'm not making this up for the show, but I've always said, Hey, it's a game of base hits. And when you get those triples and home runs, that's where your big paydays come and make your profit for the year. So a lot of times your base hits keep you in the game. They help you offset your costs. They kind of keep you cause you're not going to hit a home run on every deal you do ever. Right. So right. you should get comfortable doing those things that are covering your marketing, covering your overhead costs. And then once you get to a certain point, it all starts to become, you know, profit, right? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that that's the name of the game essentially. Yeah. Cause when we're wholesaling, you know, we have to leave, you know, some, some profit for the rehabber. Right. So of course, you know, they're taking most of the risk and they're, they're going to the ones that are going to be putting the money out and going through the four months or whatever it takes to get their profit. So yeah, got to hit a single. So let's talk about the importance of kind of learning from your failures. Cause in sports, um, you know, you, you may do something, and, but you tend to revisit that. You're like, well, if I had that, that to do again, here's what I would do differently, or here's how I'm going to do it differently next time. But I think for a lot of real estate investors, they're just like, oh, I lost another one. I lost another one. And they don't reflect back and say, how could I have gotten that one? Or, you know, yeah. what could I have done differently? Right. So just maybe kind of make that connection there and the importance of learning from your failures. Yeah. There's huge lessons in, in learning from your failures and the ability to be able to uh, be aware of that and be present in the moment is huge. And I think it's, you've got to kind of retrain your brain to, to take those negatives and correlate a positive out of it. So being present means focusing again, I keep re repeating this, but I'm focusing on uh, my actions and not results. So essentially if an action that I took failed, you know, then if I'm present in my actions and I can look at, okay, here's my core process. What did I do wrong here? Then there's huge learning moments in those, in those failures. So again, going back to your mindset, you have to expect those failures to come. Mm -hmm. And if you can retrain your, your mind to say, what, you know, what can I do differently this time? You, you're going to slowly but surely eliminate repeated mistakes learn from those mistakes and then get better. Um, you know, I, 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 I make mistakes all the time. And one of the ways that I learned to deal with mistakes or um, adversity, right? We, we always have adversity. The title company sure. calls, your deal is falling apart. Uh, the seller calls, uh, I'm having a change of heart. I mean, your buyer calls, I can't get funding in time. You know, there's a million things that happen in this business that, you know, can, can ruin a deal. So going back to the baseball side, you know, imagine you're in a very, you know, tense situation. It's there's two outs in the bottom of the ninth, you know, the winning runs on second or third. How do you deal with a guy that's throwing, you know, 95 miles an hour at your hands, you know, and, and not getting that, that, that situation so far out of context that you can't be in the moment. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things that we talked about. And one of them is like a focal point. So like I have a focal point in my office. It kind of sounds a little strange, but it could be anything, you know. So I pick out a focal point, and the meaning of the focal point is: so if I get that tough call or I get that bad news, you know, most people's instincts are to like freak out, right? And and this is the worst day of my life. I can't do this, and 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 really kind of lose the focus. So if I have those moments, like I pick out that focal point, and what that focal point means to me is like. Matt, like you've earned the opportunity to be here. You've put a lot of quote unquote hay in the barn. 
staying up at two, three o'clock in the morning for a lot of years, investing in your education, reading books, going through a bunch of deals. So that focal point tells me you've earned the right to, to understand the process. You've been through the process. So I put a ton of hay in the barn and I know over the course of what I've done, it's going to be okay. If today's result isn't perfect, I'm going to trust the process. Hmm. And by just trusting the process, I know at the end of the day, it's going to be okay. Because there's another win that's going to become available for us if we continue on that that process. And so, you know, for me, it's worked. You know, I, I tried to eliminate the um, what they call stinking thinking, right? Because that, you know, we have our, our biggest... Uh, you know, naysayer on our shoulder all the time. So if we can, if we can kind of put our, our thoughts into, you know, a focal point and, you know, why did I wake up every morning and do this or, or whatever your case is, it, it kind of sets you back into the moment. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I mean, you probably would agree with this. I think it gets easier as you start to scale your business too, because stuff falls through, right? You, you, you yeah, know, those yeah. things happen you get more experiences, you get more chances to fail and learn from them, right? So I think one of the challenges that a lot of real estate investors have, especially if they're new or trying to get started, is that one deal, like if you're doing, even if you're doing a deal a year, which, you know, isn't bad for a lot of new people for sure. I mean, it depends on what your goals are, right? But if you lose that one deal, it hurts a lot more than you lost one of five that month, oh, right? Oh, I, I remember <laughs> strangling my deal. So, you know, when I first started that one deal, because like you're right, I mean, you know, it was going to pay for three or four or five months of, of living. So you've got like a chill cold on it and you're never, you know, going to close that thing because it's, it's, you're, you've got so much pressure on it that, you know, something inevitably happens. But, you know, my grandfather always says, you got to be turning over rocks. It's hmm, like, yeah. how many rocks are you turning over today? And I, I remember him telling me that and, and I'm like, what do you mean? You know, but you know, you, you're turning over rocks that you're prospecting, right? You continue to prospect, prospect, prospect. Well, pretty soon he says, you're going to turn over one of those rocks and you're going to find a piece of gold. So it kind of made a lot of sense to me. You've got to talk to 50 people a day when you start in this business. Minimum. The phone The phone is is your friend. I mean, that's that's what you have. And if you're not prepared to pick up the phone every day and talk to people about what you do, then it's going to be a long road. Yep. So if you're not on the phone you're not prospecting. If you're not prospecting, you don't have leads. If you don't have leads, you don't have a business. It's pretty contract. <laughs> it sounds like I wrote that for, and you just read it, but you know, we, speak, we're speaking, <laughs> we speak the same language, my friend. Right. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, Matt, definitely appreciate you sharing time with us today. Oh, thank you. I, it's been a pleasure. I, I really love your show. I've, I've learned a great, lot of great lessons in some of the late mornings and I'm staying up and watching the show. I, yeah, I really love Hey, it. thanks. I appreciate that. Um, so how do folks get a hold of you? If they want to like learn more, where, where, where should they go? Sure. Uh, just simple email address is uh, Matt. That's with two T. So M A T T at fast cash closer.com. Matt at fast cash closer.com. Okay. So that's just email me, you know, if, if you have some questions or want to reach out, uh, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff too. So pretty easy to, to find. Okay. And well, yeah, we'll add some links uh, down below the video here for, for, uh, how to find you on social media as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Awesome. Be great. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks again, everybody that listened in today, there's some great lessons here. Um, you know, I do a lot of shows obviously, and I'm not taking anything away from any of the other shows I've done, but, uh, this was an exciting topic for me cause it's, it's so fundamental to this business. So I hope you got something out of it. Um, and, uh, we do definitely appreciate you joining us. We're going to keep cranking shows out this year. So keep on listening. Matt, thanks again for being with us today, my friend. You got it, Mike. You guys have a great day and I appreciate it again. Absolutely. Everybody have a great day. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the flipner.com investing show. If you're not yet an elite member of flipner, you're missing out. We have tons of great training, including a new detailed master class published each month and live training webinars with experts twice a month. Plus you'll get access to all of our archives where we already have a growing library of master classes and other training videos. Elite members also get membership in our incredible online mastermind group where many of the top real estate investors from across the country 
including many of the hundreds of guests I've had on the show in the past, are already members. Whether you're brand new, looking to get started, or a veteran, you simply must join today. I promise you won't be disappointed. To learn more or join today, please visit flipnerd.com slash lab. That's flipnerd.com slash lab. See you on the next show.